we can reinsert that. But this is just gonna plug right into the switch panel. I highly recommend that you don't connect this straight to the battery. So as you can see here, I told you I was gonna use a liquid electrical tape. Uh, I do have the front light bar. Boom, light bar. Hey there, CPO here. And I know I told you in the last video pertaining to the Team Tech off-road sway bar and TTO disconnect that I was going to be installing the airline next, the next video. Well, this is the next video and I'm not installing the airline. I decided to change my mind and I'm going to install the switch system first because I can run the airline, but until I have a switch that I can use to power the solenoid, I can't really test anything. So I figured, eh, I'll do the switch system next. So that's what this video is. So I'm gonna be installing this S-Tech switch system, which comes with the relay box, and then this switch housing with switches uh, that's gonna go inside the Jeep. So if this is the first switch system you're installing in your Jeep, it's actually gonna be pretty easy. It's gonna be a little challenging for me because I have a whole bunch of stuff here already going on that I have to figure out. Number one, what did I do? Where are my wires running? Where do they come from? Where do they go to? And then I have my waterproof fuse relay box here and the s Tech is gonna fit here. I think they may actually fit next to each other. I think that they may coexist, which will be nice. Although eventually I'll probably phase this out, but just to get some initial functionality out of the s Tech system, I think that I don't have to remove this one. Oh, but that's a problem, right? When you start doing modifications and then modifications to modifications, and then on top of that, additional modifications, eventually it gets all sort of uh, messy. Um, but just know that if you're installing this, like you said, I just decided to put a switch system in my Jeep for the first time. You decided to pick the s Tech switch system. By the way, I've got a 10% discount code. Hang on to the end of this video. Uh, make sure you get that code, 10% uh, pretty righteous. This is pretty easy to install if you have a blank canvas. So some of the things I'm gonna be moving around, uh, you may see, you probably won't have to worry about those. Uh, I'm gonna try and minimize as much as I, as I can in the video, because it only applies to me. But I also want you to see the real world of what it's like to work on my Jeep. As I've said before, I try not to do magical installs. I like to show you really what I'm working on. Uh, it's not helpful for a lot of people to do a two minute video of a you know magical install with no uh, bloody knuckles or sweat. You know, I show you what I have to deal with. So in this case, I've got to deal with a mess of wires that I'm gonna clean up. And so let me work on that, figuring out what I have and then I'll show you uh, getting this s -Tech system plugged in. All right, so I'm currently trying to make sense out of my existing wiring. This is for the Superchips Trail Dash 2 switches. There are four switches, two on each of these, that go into my ARB air compressor and control my two locker solenoids. So one tip I have for you is uh, don't be afraid to take pictures as you go because what i'm going to do is disconnect all of this and then figure out um, what wiring i need to go where to reconnect to the s tech system uh, it's pretty simple really um, it's just figuring out what i have which wires go to what so it's a standard arb air compressor uh, harness so those color codes should be well defined, but I can also see what colors I have them plugged into here. And then from there, these do tell me labels like switch one, switch two, ground, things like that. So I'm sort of just trying to sort this out. Uh, not pretty. So the reason I'm working on this now is because I'm actually gonna put the new relay box from s -Tech right here. So I'm just basically cleaning this area out. And since I need to change up my wiring anyway, I may as well just figure that out right now before I uh, install the s -Tech. So I'm gonna keep working on this, but yeah, uh, this is the fun stuff. And I wired this myself and it's still a challenge to remember exactly what I did and why. So I couldn't imagine having to go through and figure out an install that you had nothing to do with.
All right, so essentially I got the wiring area cleared. Uh, this is now the uh, wires that are going for the air compressor and the front and rear lockers. Um, I've got sort of things pushed out of the way. And I think just basically doing a mock-up, I'm pretty close to being good except for this. This is my horn. Uh, it's relocated because of my air compressor location. So what I'm doing now is looking at what I can do with it. And I'm not sure if there is anything I can easily do with it or not. But I think getting that out of the way frees me up nicely. So I'll see if I can reintegrate that horn back into the mix. But for now, I can clearly see that my S-Tech box is gonna fit nicely in here, even next to the other relay box. So yeah, that's good. So you may be wondering what this yellow thing is. This is actually my differential breather tube for the front diff. I made an extension using air hose. So, and it's coiled the way it is so that it could be a pain in the butt to get out. No, it's coiled the way it is so that if water does get into this top area, it'll come in, it'll have to go through several curls before it goes down into the differential. So that's why that's there. Um, there's plenty of places I could put this. It doesn't have to go right here. I just have it up as high as I can. I'll play with that later. I think that this is something better left to figure out after the fact. But again, it goes to show you um, there's sort of a butterfly effect. You make one change, which impacts another change, which impacts another change. And then going back and trying to redo things, uh, it can, can be a little bit challenging, but with a little bit of patience and creativity, pretty much any of it is overcomable. All right, so on this S-Tech relay box, we basically have three bundles of wires and then one smaller ground wire. The smaller ground wire is gonna go here uh, to this grounding post. The very short bundle, which is this one, is your outputs for your various accessories. So when I wanna send power to a solenoid, I'm gonna send it from one of these. So that's nice and short. So you basically you're gonna run all of your wires, light bars, lockers, uh, sway bar, uh, all of that stuff is gonna run to here. Then you have two really long bundles of wire. One of them is gonna to go to the battery side, and then one of them is gonna go inside the Jeep for the switch panel. And so it's important to sort of figure out how you wanna run those in advance. Obviously battery side, I'm gonna run along the firewall here. Uh, with all this other stuff. And then this is going to dump in. There is a grommet underneath here. You can't see it. It's there. Actually, if you go to the S-Tech install video, they did a great sort of view without an air compressor. But there's a grommet in here in the firewall that dumps down. I mean, it's where I've run most of my wires lately because um, all my side ports are sort of already filled or not accessible. So this can go down and then this is gonna end up sitting right about here. So this S-Tech bracket, I'd actually give you uh, a cool little red piece that's zip tied in place just to sort of hold it so you can see how it's gonna go. This is gonna mount to there and then that's gonna mount just like that. So first thing we need to do is mount this to the bracket. They do give you all of the hardware you need to accomplish this and a really great instruction manual. Uh, probably one of the better 
instruction manuals I've ever seen. However, with that said, you do need to go to stechswitch.com and look at the updates. But he will update the manual from time to time with new information, either based on consumer feedback or installation feedback. Uh, may tell you to change something or what have you. But he has it pushing like that. Honestly, I, I'm going to reverse this from what's in the manual because this is the part you'll see from the outside. So I'm gonna make that the cleaner look. Maybe it's just me, but I think it looks cleaner. Instead of seeing the bolts coming through the nut, you'll see just the, uh, the bolt heads. Oh, I see what's going on here. This is an updated bracket design from what's shown in the manual. So that's why it looks differently. Uh, the other one doesn't have the s tac app. It actually goes down. So either way, uh, we're good. Just make sure the long side is here with the slot and the short side is here. And everything should work fine. So let me, uh, let me tighten these guys down. All right, one thing you do want to make sure is that you've got your ground cable run in a way that makes sense because that's going to go off to this side. And that will slide right underneath there. That's perfect. All right, so this one you need to remove all the way. And then this one, you can just slide it under just like that. That looks really clean. All right, I'll add that into there. All right, let me catch you up to where I'm at right now. So I've pulled the s -Tech, uh box off again because I ended up remounting this horn. Again, this is relocated. It normally goes back here, but because of the air compressor, it was pushed forward. I drilled a new hole in this bracket that allows it to sit and play nicely um, in the mix instead of interfering so I had to take that off so that I could put the nut down below and then while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and run this um, wiring loom this bundle here all right so I told you that there's a um, place to get in through the firewall right here underneath the brake um, booster so this is the wire that I already have coming through I'm going to pull out this was for the trail dash 2 switch system so I'm gonna pull that out. When I pull that back through, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to it with some tape so that when I pull it through, I'm basically using it to also pull my wire bundle through at the same time. There should be plenty of room for that to fit through. So it's kind of hard to show you but I just wanted to give you a frame of reference of where it is in relation to the wheel well. All right, so uh, I've got to remove this centerpiece, which is kind of easy for me because I already have the corners gone from my roll cage install. And there is a uh, factory wiring harness that runs through here, but you want this centerpiece, uh, yeah, right here. Oh, it's a little bit dusty. And then also note this notch here is what faces forward and up. So you're looking at it like this. So your switches are gonna be like this. If you do it upside down, you'll probably be sad. So, but I think the template covers that. All right guys, so this is pretty important. So pay attention. This is the template that came with my switch system in the box. And there are two sides. One of them is for the four position and one of them is for the six position. So first warning, if you've got a four position switch and you cut for a six position, you're gonna be sad because you're hole is going to be way bigger than you need it. 
The other thing I think you need to pay careful attention to is the dimensions of this and make sure this is printed properly. This is the one I got with the kit and it wasn't printed to the proper scale. As a matter of fact, right here it says, please check printer scaling and set to 100%. The best place I think to measure is either this two inch, uh, but ideally this 5.75, so five and three quarters. And as you can see here, I'm only measuring five and a half. I printed it on my printer using uh, no fit to page, 100% scaling, and it comes in at exactly five and three quarter inches. And this comes in at exactly two inches. The other thing you can do is compare it against your switch housing to make sure it looks like it's gonna fit. These are gonna just barely squeeze in to that box. But if I use the one that came with the kit, the box is too small. Just something to think about. Um, I'm gonna let Scott uh, at S Tech Switch know that these are coming printed um, at the wrong scaling. You can see the border around the edge. The one I printed with 100% has no border. So if you get one with a border around it, that's an alert and says, hey, this might be the wrong size. Anyway, I don't want to belabor that, but I think it's important to make sure that you get the right template. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out this square now that I'm confident it's the right size. These holes here, I'm going to save those for later, and I'm just going to go straight uh, with a uh, spring-loaded center punch to mark those. I'm just going to fold this right on that line as straight as I can. I'm going to fold the bottom one. Right on that line, as straight as I can. All right, now we're ready for the trim piece. Now obviously, uh, top is top, bottom is bottom, but make sure you know which is top and which is bottom on this. Again, where that uh, cutout square is, is the top. And then it does fit nicely right around there, so that's what you're looking for. And now what I want to do is center this between these two. So find a point of reference. Three and a half. By golly, I think I just nailed it. Perfect. All right, so I realize measuring the center between things sometimes gives people a little bit of consternation because it's challenging to figure out where you're measuring from to, to where to, and then how do you get it consistent on each side. You know, your, um, your ability to identify that um, will make this more centered. Now, to be fair, you can spend as much or as little time as you want doing these little things. Here's a little trick I used for this one. This is just a zip tie. You'll see I ended up with a couple of marks on it. This first one was my initial mark, and then my final measurement mark was there, and I'll show you why. I'm also using the center punch just to sort of push in the top of the zip tie, just to hold it in place, and I'll show you where I'm doing that. So you have these little slots here that appear to be equally uh, placed in the two uh, sun visor mounts. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting the head of that zip tie into that little catch. Um, and then basically I'm just using this to hold it so it doesn't pop out as I pull it tight. And then as I pull it across, you can see where that mark hits right here on that hole, right? So that is my measurement for this side. And then all I'm doing is I'm flipping the entire thing around and then pulling the measurement on this side. And you can see I get the same alignment as it pertains to that hole. All right, so after I did that, I just uh, taped it down so I didn't lose the positioning, making sure that you know everything is flat. And then from there, I'm going to just trace the other thing I'm going to do is just take this hole punch here and put it in the center of that hole, which will give me a nice identifier to drill. 
All right, now I can remove my template. Now to deal with this, uh, you can dremel it or cut it. I'm gonna cut it with a razor. Just cause it's actually probably quicker and easier. I'm on the outside of that line I made because that's where the edge of the paper was. Obviously, you want to be careful here. Um, probably any mistake you made will be covered up, so not super critical. I just wouldn't accidentally shoot the razor knife across the entire face of this. Uh, that might be bad. And then you'd be sad. A lot of things can go wrong and make people sad. So let's just avoid that if we can. Right? You can always cut more later, but you can't cut less later. So remember that. All right, so now that I've got my initial score done, I brought out the big boy with a fresh blade. All right, there's the finished look, and you can see still have this post, which is going to help clip in. All right, you can do your test fit, do any additional trimming as necessary. I think that's pretty darn good. All right, so these are 964th inch holes. In your kit, you'll have these two little studs and we're gonna thread those into, I'm gonna put a little dab of blue thread lock on there. I'm okay if this is hard to remove. All right, now we can reinsert that and hopefully those holes will line up. And they are, but they're kind of hitting at an angle. So they kind of want to go at an angle. I drilled them straight in, but the actual Stud's gonna enter at an angle like that. So re-drilling that. Okay, now you've got these little nuts with the uh, lock washer on there. I'm not gonna thread lock this side. All right, boom, there we go. Ready to go back in the Jeep. So this guy, they came through the firewall, comes out here. Now, normally it'd be trivial to sort of run this up and around. I have a roll cage that I'm trying to avoid disassembling. So it might take me a little extra work to figure this out, but I will make a way. All right, finally got this figured out. I was able to squeeze a coat hanger down back in here, got down on the side. I have just some yellow um, wire that's more pliable and easier to get up. And then I have the actual wire I'm trying to to do so let's see if we can get this done all right so the yellow wire is through I can get this coat hanger off so I don't scratch anything up There we go. 
Now I can get this yellow wire out of the mix, put that back in the toolbox. All right, so now this is gonna shoot up here and then go across and over to the switch housing. So let me get that done. This is something like 95% of you will never have to worry about because you will not have a cage in the way or you will be willing to remove this cage uh, side piece. But I was not willing to do that and I knew there would be a way to get this thing up. So if you need that, boom, there you go, you're welcome. All right, so now I can actually hang this bad boy back up where it goes. Um, they do give you some cable ties, some zip ties, which will help sort of tidy things up. I might just go ahead and, but this is just gonna plug right into the switch panel. that got it boom nice and clean all right next all right so now that we have the switch housing installed in the interior now it's time to finish up the exterior so i'm going to run this power cable across to the battery and fuse box and then the last thing we have to do is actually uh add stuff to our outputs so anything that you connect to these output wires is gonna get 12 volts whenever you flip the switch. Uh, and there is one special wire here that I wanna talk about, so hopefully I don't forget. But first, I'm gonna run that over to that side of the Jeep. And I'm gonna do it by running it along existing wiring looms and use zip ties to uh, secure it to the existing runs. All right, so I highly recommend that you don't connect this straight to the battery. Um, I would recommend you use a fuse or a resettable circuit breaker uh, reasonably close to the battery, and here's why. If you connect this straight to the battery, You've got a run of wire, looks to be about maybe 10 feet, before you get into the fuse box. Now that S-Tech uh, fuse box there, that's gonna protect all of the circuits that are coming off of that. So all of those circuits are fused. So from that point, you're protected um, if there's a short in one of those wires that you have connected to that. However, if there's a short anywhere along this wire, you're not protected to the battery. So you get into a, a crash and your hood crumples up and cuts into this wire. I mean, it can really happen. Um, cuts into the wire, you're now shorted to ground. You have direct 12 volt battery power going from the battery straight into wherever you've shorted the ground, let's say the hood in this case. And all that's gonna do is heat up and catch fire and burn your Jeep to the ground. So the reason we put a fuse in there is so if that does happen, when that shorts the ground, it'll trip the fuse and protect you. So you wanna be as close to the battery with that fuse as possible. You're only protected with the wiring after the fuse, not before it. So anyway, highly recommend it. Uh, you can get the fuse uh, breakers. I got this one, this is 60 amp. Uh, I got it from uh, S-Tech when I ordered my kit and I believe uh, it's gonna be an option to include either this or an inline fuse like I have back here. Um, I like the resettable ones because you don't have to worry about keeping track of fuses if it blows for some reason. Uh, first of all, figure out why. Uh, and then after that, yeah, you can also reset it. Um, now where you mount this is going to be up to you. That's sort of the challenge, right? Is figuring out how to creatively get all this stuff packed in underneath the engine compartment. Uh, but I like this one because it does have these little posts. This has a nice terminated ring connection on it so it will bolt right over to this. Now, the other question is, how do I get from the battery to this? 
And I'm using this guy right here. This is a pre-made uh, battery wire. Actually, I got it at Lowe's. It's for tractors. So this whole kit with a red and a black pre-made wire was seven bucks. So I just want the red one and I'm gonna go from the battery to the bat side of this. They are labeled bat and aux. And that's an important thing to know because this current flow is directional. Uh, so you have to make sure you get it in the right direction so that it will trip the breaker properly. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna install that wire. Uh, and then also on the end of this, there is a little pigtail that's gonna go to your accessory circuit. So the way this is set up uh, from STEC is that your switches won't have any power unless your key's on. And it's this guy right here that tells your switch system that the accessory power is on when your key's on, and then it will enable and activate all of your stuff. So here's what we're gonna do. It comes with a little pigtail uh, at a fuse kit. And this is an important thing I wanna talk about as well because these fuses in here are directional. So the place we're gonna plug in is actually kind of interesting. It's M9. Uh, there's a diagram right here, shows where it is, and then says what it is. M9 is right here, um, and it's empty in probably all of your vehicles. I'm gonna plug it in right there while I talk about it. The reason it's empty is it's for your rear heated seat. I'd be willing to bet most of you running Jeeps don't have rear heated seats. So that's gonna be empty. The good thing about that is it turns on whenever you turn on your key. So it's accessory power. Now remember I said it's directional. You need to make sure it points in that direction. And previously I told you that there are updated instructions that you can get um, online from stechswitch.com. And this is actually one of the updates is to make sure you know the direction that you're putting this in. And the reason is, is because the uh, power is fed through one side and then is fused and then has the output side. So there's the battery or the source and then there's the load. Um, if you put it in backwards, you'll still get power, accessory power when the key's on and off. It just won't actually be a fused connection. It will be unfused because it's bypassing the fuse. So make sure you get it going in the right direction. And then I've previously used this as an output before. Uh, my uh, camera is, uh, is connected in the same fashion. I actually pulled it out just to not confuse things, but I have it right in here. Um, but this is a perfect place. I just notched it. I actually used a little RTV sealant, which now is a little bit old. I'll probably refresh that um, to seal that. And then you can close the fuse box right over it and then have the output coming out out of there. So that's where we're gonna connect that. And then I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna mount this bad boy. Um, and, uh, and I'll show you what I come up with. So I did uh, wrap this with a wire loom tape. Uh, it's now doesn't matter what color the wire was inside because you can't see it anyway, but I wrapped it to uh, do a couple things, give it some extra chafing protection, but also make sure the ends of these terminals were covered up because uh, I wanted as little metal exposure as possible. Uh, it just reduces the opportunity for things to get shorted out. Now, one other thing I did want to mention, the end of this, right? So if you decide to use a different connector and cut off this ring terminal, uh, you're going to find out something actually quite interesting. This is not a single solid wire uh, running through like you might expect. This is actually six individual wires that feed individually those circuits in the STEC uh, switch box. And so if you cut this, um, just know that you're gonna have to uh, strip and recrimp in the bundle of wires. And I talked to STEC switch about this and uh, he said, yeah, it helps keep costs down. Uh, thick wire is expensive and uh, running multiple runs of the smaller gauge wire uh, is, uh, allows it to be a lot more flexible, a lot uh, cheaper. And, uh, and also he says it's more efficient run of electricity. So, hey, it is what it is, but I just wanna let you know, if you do cut this off, you're not gonna get just one big fat wire. You're gonna get a bunch of small wires that you need to uh, re-terminate. And I like to use a little bit of liquid electrical tape to just cover up these terminals so that there's no exposed metal um, out here. Cause I'm gonna strap this down to an existing wire loom. And I just don't want any metal that uh, if I can avoid it. So some people love it, some people hate it. Um, I like to use liquid electrical tape a lot for things like this. So you can get this pretty much anywhere, even like Walmart, uh, works great though. You just gotta let it dry. All right, remember I told you that there was something special in here? 
Um, you'll notice that five of the six of these look the same, but this one is a little bit different. So this actually can handle more power than the rest of these, more amperage. And there's a gray wire here that's a little bit thicker than all the others. And it's sort of the bonus wire that whatever the most power drawing accessory you have, as long as it's under 40 amps, put it on the gray wire because it's actually got a different relay that can handle the additional amperage. So uh, that's just something I wanted to point out to you. The other thing is a lot of people ask if this is waterproof, water resistant. This design, uh, it's, a, it's designed to be in the hood of a vehicle. Uh, it's not waterproof, uh, but it is water resistant. You can hit it with a, you know, power washer and you can, you know, get mud and crap all in here like you would normally. Uh, the design is such that it prevents water from going up inside. But the other thing to note is this isn't integrated circuitry. This is old school relays and fuses. And if it gets wet, it's not necessarily going to hurt anything. Dry it off, put it back together. I mean, that's sort of the nice thing about a non-integrated circuit uh, type system. It's sort of uh, the old school thing just works. Uh, if you have a circuit board that gets wet, uh, you might have some serious damage, but with this thing, uh, you know, once it dries out, it's pretty much good to go again. Now, there is some additional circuitry in here. There's a relay, for example, that turns things on whenever the accessory power's on. There's also a temperature sensor in here. So if for some reason it gets way too hot and starts to overheat, it will actually trip the circuit and uh, shut everything down until the temperature drops. So there is some additional safety features in here. I'm not entirely aware of it's all down in here. But I do know this, with the lid on, go out, use your Jeep, wash your engine compartment, it won't matter. This should not be bothered at all by it. All right, so I'm using the manual here to identify the colors that go with the different switches. And then I'm looking at my switches to find out which wires I need to wire where. Um, so red on the ARB harness goes to the air compressor. That's yellow because it's in switch position three for me. Um, the ARB air compressor yellow one is what I have going to the front locker and that's switch position six, so that's done. And then the rear locker is switch position four for me. Nope. The rear locker is switch position five for me. See, this is why you've got to verify. And let me show you what I'm doing here, by the way. Um, these are pretty small wires and these are pretty big connectors. So rather than uh, changing that up, I'm going to keep using the existing connectors. But what I do is strip off a fairly significant amount and I just fold it in thirds. That gives me a pretty big chunk to bite onto. Uh, and then when I crimp it down, it'll get a good seal. And I'll uh, fill these uh, with liquid electrical tape before I tape it all over. So let me just go double check. Uh, green is rear air compressor. Green is going to brown. Brown is switch position five. Looking in the Jeep now. All right, switch position five is the rear locker. It's probably a good idea to test these things before you crimp them, but I'm feeling frisky today. And you can see because I did that trifold, it's got a pretty good bite on it. All right, the orange one is going to be my new sway bar disconnect, which I don't have a solenoid for. And then white is going to be my front LED. Green is going to be my rear LEDs. Now I do have this extra black wire coming out of my ARB harness. And that is going to be a ground wire. All right, so before I terminated that ground and uh, added it to the ground post, I did want to double check and sure enough, I've got continuity already to ground. Uh, so in this harness, 
for ARB, it goes in and actually ties in to this ground back here, a fatter ground, and it's also feeding a ground to the individual solenoids just fine. Yep, so I don't need this to, uh, to build that ground connection, so I'm just going to fold it back, tape it off, and uh, yeah, don't have to worry about that. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video on the install. Let me show you where I'm at right now before I bundle everything up so you can kind of see what I have going on. So I already showed you wiring to the fuse box. You can see where my circuit breaker is right there, just zip tied to that wire bundle. Um, easy to access. Uh, I guess side benefit, if the hood smashes down, it'll probably trip that breaker, which is not a bad thing. There is enough clearance with the hood closed, so some of you may be wondering about that. Uh, I've already checked that out, not a problem. Uh, it's running along the back with my other bundle of wires and my airline, and then comes over, obviously, into here. As far as what I have going on with wiring, there's still two that are empty. Uh, one of them is my rear lights, which I still have yet to run down uh, where that feed is. I may just end up running a new one. Uh, the problem is my rear lights are fed right now from this, and they're through the firewall and then down along to the backs. So when I have a chance, I'll try and figure out where it comes out of this and, uh, and figure out which wire that is and then, and then splice in like that. That's how I did the front light bar. Uh, I figured out where it was, cut that uh, reasonably nearby, extended it, and then added it in. The other one that's empty is my sway bar disconnect feed, and that's uh, gonna be covered in the next video. In the next video, I'm doing the uh, additional ARB solenoid installation, the airline, and then adding in that uh, to the switch so that I can activate that TTO sway bar disconnect down there. Uh, so that's why these two are empty. So as you can see here, I told you I was gonna use a liquid electrical tape to seal those. That's pretty common in uh, marine electrical wiring. So I like to do it just to keep everything from getting corroded with just moisture. Uh, but then I'm going to take that and bundle it up. By the way, for those of you that don't know, I do use this Tessa tape, uh, which is a specific wire loom tape for engine compartments, and it works really well. You can see all this black stuff on my hands. That's from playing with electrical tape that has been under here that sort of disintegrates uh, the glue. So uh, this behaves much better and has water resistance and abrasion protection. So I uh, highly recommend this. A little expensive, but I've started to use that, as you can see, for all of my wiring. Uh, if it's not loomed like this, then I'm probably going to put it in a Tessa tape. But let me show you how things work inside. All right, so sorry, it's a little dark in here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on. And you can see my lights light up. Uh, I've got the blue lights for uh, light bar, rear lights, air compressor. Red lights are sway bar disconnect, rear diff, and front diff. I debated which direction to put these. Um, a lot of people tend to go most commonly used closer to the driver and then push out that way. So I ended up deciding that that was a decent approach. So that's why rear is here and front is there. Um, previously, I was thinking in my brain, front should be on the left and the rear on the right, but I think it makes more sense actually now that I think about it that um, I'm more likely to go to these first and then that one. So anyway, just, uh, you know, you can do what you want. Uh, I do have the front light bar uh, active, so let me flip that switch. Boom, light bar. I do have the air compressor active, um, but it's already charged, so you can't tell anything. Let me see if I can get it to trigger the front and rear. I was basically cycling it back and forth to suck some air out of the air compressor. Uh, when you disengage the locker, it vents out. So basically, I was going back and forth to trigger the air compressor to refill. Uh, which is how I know everything is working fine. So rear, and you can hear it sort of hiss when I close it. And there it is. Listen for the hiss. I don't know if you can hear that. I can hear it. Um, anyway, air compressor off and light bar off. So I still have rear lights to work out and I still have to add to the sway bar disconnect. That'll be in the next video. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.